Happy Monday, YouTube. Leafs, Oilers, for the last time this season, at least regular season. And uh, it was the next-gen game that the Leafs do every year for the last number of years now, um, where they normally have like kids in, a lot of kids in, in the crowd, kids doing play-by-play uh, uh, -play and uh, announcing in the, within the rink and stuff like that. So um, the only one I saw tonight was, was the girl that normally does the in-between period stuff with Christine Simpson, um, Abigail, her name is. She was, she was there and doing stuff. But otherwise, I don't think they really had much going on. Uh, just because of COVID and stuff, right? So, so that was um, at least neat that they they did it, and and we're still able to uh, at least pull some of it off, anyways. But uh, the game tonight was uh, I didn't get to see a lot of it because again it started and I was driving home, and and then when I got home I, I had to clean up and all that shit. And uh, uh, but but from what I did see, it was another case of the Leafs, Leafs losing a close one that they were the better team in. Um, and that's sometimes the way it goes, as we know. Um, first period, the Leafs came out uh, pretty strong. Uh, it sounded like, from I was listening to it on the radio, um, listening to it on the radio um, as I drove home, and it sounded like, uh, you know, Marner and Matthews have been pretty quiet lately in terms of their production, and sometimes not really... In, in the game as well, but it sounded like they were buzzing tonight. Um, it sounded like the Tavares, Nylander, uh, Galchenyuk line was buzzing. So th the top two lines um, sounded like they were going, which is always a good thing when your top forwards are, are performing well. That's that's how you win games, right? Uh, they lead the way because that's what they're paid to do. So um, unfortunately, the Oilers opened the scoring about six, six minutes uh, in or so. And uh, I didn't see it, I just heard it, but it sounded like it was a, a little deke through the legs of Hutchison. That was the other surprise, um, which which put the Oilers up one nothing early. And in listening to it, I was like, oh no, because remember his last start against Winnipeg? Um, he let in two really early goals and got the hook right away. And uh, they ended up losing that game, I believe. So, it was kind of like, oh no, are we going to have another one of these games, right? Um, fortunately, uh, about a minute and something after that Archibald goal for Edmonton, uh, making it one nothing. Leafs came back and scored two quick ones within a couple minutes or so. Uh, Marner got the first one. Uh, it was a really neat play. It was, I don't remember who it was, maybe it was Brody, or no, maybe it was Justin Hall. Um, from deep in his own end, fired it up the left wing boards, and, uh, and, and Hyman, received it kind of right at the Edmonton blue line and Marner was going with him and uh and really flying into the zone and dragged his foot at the last second to remain onside and uh as he continued down the left wing Hyman fed him a deep pass and then he just cut across the crease got Smith to bite and he went down on the deke and uh and then he roofed it over him so really cool goal to to, to open the scoring and tie things up at one and then, like I said, a couple minutes later, give or take, uh, Matthew scored. So the two big guys scored uh, early for the Leafs and uh, actually gave them a 2-1 lead by the time the period ended. So, um, And Matthews was just, he curled out of the corner and just and just roofed a shot, uh, shot over Mike Smith after he went down. So very similar in terms of the circumstances uh, around the actual moment of the goal scoring there between the two of them. So things were looking good. The Leafs were out shooting them pretty good by then. Um they were carrying the play despite Hutchison's early goal they seemed to have rebounded and and were setting the tone and, and carrying the play uh, the second period was probably the most even of the three periods uh, Edmonton kind of dialed in and and uh, and things became a little more back and forth and tit for tat and stuff um, despite that there was no goals scored um, so we went to the third where Turris for the Oilers scored within the first couple minutes nodding things at two so um Leafs would press be the better team and it wasn't only the top two lines that were doing a lot of the uh the buzzing the third line actually had some really good shifts as well of uh, Mikheya, Vengval and Kerfoot um so you know kind of everybody was contributing on this night and the Leafs had I think a couple of posts they had one that kind of went up rolled across the top of the net and then fell down in front and Tavares was like behind the net kind of ah, ah, whacking at it and he couldn't get it to, to go in like 
they had a number of chances that easily could have had this game at, you know, five one or whatever, right? Or five two or whatever. So um, but it just for some reason they didn't want to bounce for them and uh, and, and the game ended going to overtime at two two. And uh, it ended seventeen seconds in. Oh. After Smith robbed Matthews on a chance right, right off the get-go, Oilers turned it up the other way. Matthews and, and McDavid were going at it kind of in the neutral zone. Uh, McDavid kind of peeled off of him and then and then took off down the right wing. Somebody fed him the puck. Uh, he flipped a pass over on the left side of the slot to Darnell Nurse, who had pinched up and went to the net, and that was it. Uh, he beat Hutchison short side by, on the glove, and... Uh, and uh, yeah, three-two loss in overtime for the Leafs. So bright news is they bank a point, still maintain a two-point lead atop the division right now. Winnipeg plays tonight, so so that position could change a bit. Um, yeah, because I think it's Leafs forty-seven, forty-six, and then Oilers forty-four, and then Winnipeg forty-two. Or I don't know, it's something like that. But but uh, hopefully Winnipeg lo loses tonight, regardless. Uh, and uh, and the Leafs can can just everything can stay like it is right now. Um, good news is they have uh, one of the most uh, highest amounts of game games remaining in the division, so they they do have a game in hand or so on on some of these other teams. So um, yeah, so overall kind of disappointing that they lost, but. After getting down early, one nothing, they battled back. You know their top players were their top players. I thought they played pretty responsibly defensively for most of the night, especially considering they can't contained uh, McDavid and Drysaddle again for the most part for for the game the whole game. So, like, all signs point to the Leafs being the better team. Should have won the game. Didn't. What are you gonna do, right? So um, the the only thing of high concern for me right now is the fact that Campbell wasn't able to. He was supposed to start, but um, but Hutchinson got the start instead. So they've had such bad luck with their goalies and injuries this year. I've never seen some, anything like this um, in terms of a Leaf season. I've seen other teams go through this similar sort of thing. Uh, Ottawa this year has had the same kind of trouble. Um, but yeah, like Freddie's gone down and Jack's been down and then back and then down and then back and uh, and they've just had to rely on you know Hutchison for some of it and and uh, uh, they just can't seem to get any consistency in the net. So you know, just when Freddie went down and they were gonna let Jack run with it, you know, something's they haven't said what's going on with him. So. Um, but he he is still slated to play the next game against Winnipeg on Wednesday. So I don't know if this was just a uh, we're going to give you a day off just because he was still coming off that injury and they didn't want to push him too hard or whatever, or if he re-aggravated something or whatever. But I don't know. But uh, that is definitely a concern considering we're, what, they've played 34 games now, 35. Uh, there's only 20-ish games left in the regular season. So... Um, the one thing you do want to have going into the playoffs is your top goaltenders healthy and, and ready to go, right? Because without good goaltending, you know, teams don't win cups. So, um, you know, it's the most important position in all of sports, uh, I consider it anyways. Um, so, so yeah, that's, uh, that's concerning. But uh, hopefully 20-ish games left on the docket that'll be enough to get both those guys back and healthy and uh, on a bit of a roll before the end of the season but uh, that remains to be seen so uh, we will find out in the near future so till the next game toodles